Okay, everyone. So we're going to start um, our second call about the Tower Garden. Um, and we're very excited about the fact that we've got a special guest uh, from the US, um, Doug, Doug Barlow. So Doug is there already. Uh, and um, then we're going to hear, um, first of all, about the Tower Garden, what it is all about. Uh, then we're going to hear some stories about the Tower Garden. And then we're going to uh, go over to the US and we're going to hear uh, from Doug about his experiences with the Tower Garden over some, what, seven, seven or eight years, I think. Yeah. All right. So let's start. So we're going to hand over. First of all, we're going to go to Portugal. <laughs> there we go. Gordon is in Portugal. And we are going to just hear a little bit about the Tower Garden. Um, and Gordon, before we do that, would you just be able to just say a bit, a little bit about your experience so far about the Tower Garden? And yes, certainly. Um, yeah, hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Gordon Wilkie. Um, I've been with Juice Plus now for, uh, I'm in my 30th year, so quite a long time. Oh. Yeah, I know. Um, but I saw the Tower Garden in, I think it was 2016. And I, I visited Phoenix and I went to, um, a facility that was run by a chemist, of all people, um, but he was a compound pharmacist. And uh, basically he put together, uh, 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 we were talking about a, a tower farm. He put together a facility that was 5,000 square feet and he had 400 tower gardens growing produce. And these tower gardens were 14 or 15 high in terms of the towers itself. The domestic ones are only five, but literally it, they were just huge. Um, the concept behind it really intrigued me because I, I believe that, you know, he would, the, the person that started this whole thing, and I'll go through a kind of quick couple of slides and, and tell you the story. Um, he was charged with the responsibility to build a, a food source that you could use anywhere in the world and, and grow anywhere. And that's exactly what he's done. He's achieved it. And, uh, you know, I was excited about it. I, I'm part of the pioneer group that, uh, that uh, did a, 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 a kind of survey, started off by growing your own produce at home, seeing how it would adapt to the European climate. And oh. here we are now, uh, 2021, where we're on the cusp of releasing it uh, to our customers. Please change the mute yeah, and mute everybody, could you? Yeah, I just mute everyone. Yeah, hi, Katie. Yeah. Okay. And I'll. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to go through a few slides just to explain for to the people that perhaps haven't seen this what this is all about. Um, I'm inside my house, but my tower is actually in our glass house, which is outside. And uh, I got to say that every single person that comes along and uh, just sees what what's happening. Uh, are just blown away with the with the opportunity. We'll hear from some of the people that uh, have got the towers and growing. I'm just going to share my screen very quickly and see if I can get this up quickly. So for the distributors, I'm not sure how many distributors we've got here, James, but for the distributors that are here on the call tonight, this is a this is a a, a presentation that is actually at the back of um, your back office and you can actually download it yourself and share this with other people. So from that point of view, uh, it, it's there for everybody to, to see. And I'm just going to uh, go to the first page and then I'm gonna view it on full screen. Right, here we go. Okay. So, as I said, this is a this is a presentation that you can all have uh, and and share that with other people. I mean, I don't have to run through some of these things, but basically, I mean, the pretty pictures tell the story. I mean, we, we're living in an environment and a, a age now where food security, uh, food safety is so important. Um, I, I've actually been through two lockdowns now in Portugal, both of which I've had probably over two or 300 bags of salad, organic salad off the tower. And, you know, we're probably almost two euros a bag over here for organic salad. So, you know, work that out. I mean, it's, it's, it's paid for itself, you know, kind of 
many times over, just, just giving us the security that we're doing that. But more and more people are turning to this and uh, you know, we've got a fantastic source um, that, that we can actually show them. And I'll just step on. Um, we, we use something called aeroponic growing, which combines the hydroponic farming, which as you can see down at the bottom, 90% less water, you've got 30% better yield, zero pesticides in, in terms of the growing and, and basically 100% home grown. And, and that is the greatest thing. You know, you, you, it's almost like your children, you can watch them grow. Sadly, you've got to eat them at the end of the day, but it's not your children, but you can see the seedlings grow and you can see the produce grow, which is fantastic. And the great thing is because it's in a vertical format, it, it, it actually doesn't take very much space up in your house or wherever you want to, to actually locate the uh, tower itself. Um, how, how it works, you can either have it inside and out, and we'll see kind of uh, examples of both. Sometimes you can take the inside one out as well. So for instance, in Portugal, um, I mean, we've got searing temperatures sometimes up to 30, 40 degrees, and I, I, I don't really want to keep it in that heat outside so I, I kind of got my one inside but we've got a glass kind of uh, house that we can just open up all the doors and, and let the air in and the fresh air etc um, but it's a uh, it's a technology that was developed by a gentleman called Tim Blank he was basically charged with by Walt Disney to um, he was in charge of the uh, land hydroponic greenhouses and as I said he was charged with the responsibility of building this this food source um, he decided to uh, that it was such a great project that he would take it into the domestic and, uh, and the commercial domain and he started his company and mess up with juice plus in 2011 and uh, we'll tell you more about the story in a minute this is how it works um, you've got the water that sits at the bottom of a sump um, 20, 20 gallons of water, I think it is. And then there's a pump that pumps all the water up the top and it's like a shower, it cascades down and each of these little nodules, and you'll see this in some of the, uh, the, the testimonials we'll have, that they're basically watering the roots of the plants and it's a constant kind of uh, watering system that's going on. And uh, as we say, we, we, can, we can eat our produce very, very quickly. Um, I, I've got, I'm constantly filling up. So I take out some of the pods, I refresh them and put in new ones. Um, leafy greens that are so easy to grow, uh, as I said, lettuces. Um, basil, we've, we've got so much basil coming out of our, our, our tower at the moment that uh, we, you know, we're making our own pesto, you know, we're giving it away to all our friends that come along and, and, and it's really fantastic. You know, it's a, it's a great uh, thing to do and to be able to do. Um, the great thing is you, you, you start off with the seedling. You, uh, we'll, we'll hear that you, there are opportunities where you can actually buy the seedlings already uh, matured, ready to go into the tower. Um, basically, you're, you're only adding the water to grow the whole thing. Um, I put mine on an automatic timer so it kind of continues on uh, and off all the time. Uh, and all that you're doing, like a swimming pool, you're checking the pH, checking the water, making sure that everything's all right. And then the great thing is you can harvest it whenever and as much as you want. And uh, that, that's, that's the beauty about it. Um, the, one of the things that I picked up when I was in uh, the, the Phoenix conference was that uh, the, the tower itself, our mission statement as a company is to inspire healthy living around the world. And this fits in so nicely into that mission statement. And uh, the, the, the spin-off, if you like, is that everyone that buys a tower then asks what other products do we actually use and do and have and uh, they, they tend to buy some of our other juice plus products and that's the great thing for me i think with an established business or a business that's just starting you've got this knock-on effect that you can actually um you know uh, commercially uh, you know market this to to a whole load of range of people and once they actually see this they'll they'll actually have some other products from you as well. Um, I don't really want to go too much into too much more detail other than just to say that, you know, it, it's an amazing product. I, I've actually had mine now for probably about 
three years actively growing. Um, there was two years where it ended up in the box and transported down to Portugal and never came out of the box because we never had any homes to go to type of thing. We're always renting. So now that we're in our situ, that we're, we're really pleased and uh, we, we love it. So James, I'll hand back to you. I hope that's just given you a little introduction in terms of the tower itself. Yeah, no, I, I think that's absolutely fantastic. And I, I think you did that beautifully in terms of the history of everything and how it's all developed. Um, so that's just absolutely great. And as we know, that presentation is on the back office. So there's lots of good um, assets in, in, in the back office. So let's now, um, I would like to bring on, we're now going to go into our story section so we're going to hear from people that are already using the Tower Garden. And I'm not sure if you're there, but are you there, Liz? Hello, mm -hmm. Liz. Are you there? All right, well, let's come back to her. We'll come back to her. Let's go to Katie. Hi, Katie. Oh, hi. Hi, how are you? I'm really good. How are oh, you? Well done. So we can see your tower garden in the background. That is looking impressive. Yeah. So, so um, I, I've literally taken. There's a few empty spaces. I've taken some out, like Gordon was saying, like um, taking a few out and putting a few back in. So I've I've actually planted a load more lettuce seeds because um, I'm finding it really difficult to find lettuce around here. So I'm, I'm thinking this is going to come into its own completely this year for me. Yes, yes, yes. It looks absolutely fantastic. So how long would you have been growing that there? How, how, how long a growth of that? Um, oh, Gordon, when did I get it? Did I get it about five-ish, four months ago, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Just about Christmas time, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so um, and then it took me a little while to get to get go growing, um, because okay. obviously you get it and then you you d you realise that you've actually got to grow the little seedlings. Yeah, yeah. So then it took me a little while to get them in there, but now they're just fantastic. Yeah, I just love it. Like Gordon said, I've got loads of lettuce, cut and come lettuce. I've got basil. I've got coriander. Um, I did have two tomato plants in there. I. I've actually transported them outside now, um, which I'm hoping, fingers crossed, they'll be fine. Um, and I also had celery in there, which I didn't really realise how celery grew. So I don't think that's actually appropriate for the tower garden either. So I've transported that outside as well. But actually, I think it's a really good way to start off your plants as well. If, you, if you've got like me, quite a king gardener, because it's amazing. They really grow fabulous in this. Fantastic. Great. And so, Katie, I mean, it's so impressive that you've grown all of that from seed. That's really yeah. great. I mean, that's tremendous because I know that, yeah. it, you know, you you were thinking, oh, how am I going to do this? But really, when you look at your tower garden, it looks fantastic. Yeah. And my children um, can see it growing every single day. They, they're active in picking things from the garden. So, you know, you're teaching your kids and your family, you know, how you know you can grow from seed and and straight to the, the table and it's absolutely amazing and like Gordon said pesto from the basil is absolutely beautiful yeah well really well fantastic that that's absolutely great okay so let's now go to I don't think Liz Liz are you there no all right she, she can't speak she's picking up her daughter so oh okay uh... <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's go to Howard now. So Howard, your tower garden is really looking very impressive there. Yeah, I've not had, uh, unfortunately, I've not had it quite as long as Katie. So I've not been able to sort of, this is my first grow. Um, and, and as some of you may have heard a little bit earlier, that I'm about 10 days in. So That's probably about halfway, to, halfway to, ha to, to harvest. It's been outside the whole time. Very good. And so what have we got growing there? Got a mixture of things. Um, we've got some rainbow chard up here. We've got two types of basil, one here, one over here. Got pak choy there and down here, mixed greens. There's sage, there's parsley, Thai basil here. So yeah, it's mainly, sat it's 
basically salad to start with. I really want to get, get a good handle on, on how to um, really propagate things before I go to slightly more exotic uh, plants. So I'm very keen to grow tomatoes on this, um, peppers as well, uh, courgettes, that sort of thing. But salad, it, it's interesting because I was, I was told or informed by a horticulturalist who we all know, Will Benson, and he mentioned that one, one of these from Sainsbury's, typically the contents has traveled 1100 miles to get to the store. It's 60 to 70% nutrient deficient by the time you get it. And the reason for that, it's a week old. So it's a responsible thing to have this. You're gonna have something that tastes better, is better for you. Um, the whole thing makes sense. And that as such, it's a great thing to be able to educate other people with. Very, very amazing how now I notice obviously you haven't got the lights on there. There's no lights. I've not got the lights. I, I said I've got lights, but I don't need them here because it's outside. When in winter time, I'm going. This is be going into a garden shed, uh, which has got light and power, and I will put the lights on at yeah. that point. Yeah. But for I'm, now, um, you know, you take advantage of the sun. Yeah, Katie, have you got the lights on yours? No. Lights? No, no, I haven't got the lights. Um, because I'm I'm in a conservatory, um, yeah. but what I might do is I may well get them for winter, um, but at the moment I haven't needed them. Okay, well done, good. All right, so Sue, welcome Sue, lovely to see you. Hi. Hi, hi. So, Sue, tell us about your experience with the Tower Garden so far. Um, okay, uh, I've had two. Uh, the first one was um, with Gordon and the big seven foot one, which was amazing. And we grew tons of stuff very quickly on there, it had the lights, had everything. A um, little a bit of a problem for me, couldn't reach the top of it. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't easy to pick leaves off. It even had to get a, had to get a step to get it off because it was pretty tall. Um, so then I, I gave that one to Simone. My, one of my front lines was a, was a permaculturist as well and she's still growing on it and uh, doing well. And then recently I bought the smaller one and it's been brilliant. In fact, I've stripped it now. I've eaten everything off it. Have you? We've had a few parties. Yes. Yeah, we've had a few parties and... Um, can you see it? So I've just, re th those lettuces and things, they've only been in there a week and two days and they're already, I can eat them already. Okay. Honestly, I've had the lights on, I put the lights on and I have to tell you the lights really push them on. Oh, well done. I've got a strawberry plant that I thought was dead when it arrived from Will, the seed leaves, they've been brilliant and I'm waiting for the next lot to come to fill the top half, they'll be here right. in the next couple of days, yeah. So you've had strawberries, you've gr been growing strawberries? Well, no, I'm, I'm just starting because I wanted to try and grow strawberries and it was two leaves, four leaves, two were dying off when it arrived, it was bashed a bit. And then the other one sort of fell off, um, but I hadn't noticed it, I looked at it yesterday and I've actually got a first strawberry come in and the leaves are about that big. Wow. So um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be delicious. There won't be hundreds yeah. of them, but yes. Well, you, you can be selling them at Wimbledon too. <laughs> that would be good, I yeah. your strawberries there. Yeah, I tell you what's beautiful is lemon basil. Um, and I brought mint this time. I've got mint in the garden. I only brought mint in there because I love the smell of it. And the office uh -oh. smells yeah. beautiful mint. It's just gorgeous. So I've got that just to smell my office nice. Well but yeah, butterhead lettuce I find is really good. The um, five fly lettuce is really good. Rocket, I've got a rocket growing like mad, two lots of rocket. Um, and then I've got, um, as the strawberry is actually growing, I've got two more strawberries coming and a few more. And then I've got a few spares that I'll sort of put in the rock wall for a while and then fill them in as I go. But yeah, I'm getting to know more about it. And I definitely find that the lights really, bring on the growth much quicker if I, if I leave them off. Yeah, yeah. And also it's, it doubles as my light in the office because my light in the office was pretty awful before. <laughs> yeah. And it just, like, just, it just makes you feel like, it's, it's like the, um, the sad thing, isn't it? It makes you feel like it's daylight. It just- Yeah, no, I agree with you. And there's something really nice about the, the water starting and the lights coming on. It's like, it's wonderful. It's the life of nature, isn't it? it, it, it yeah, it, it is. It's, yeah. It's, it's, Thank you. Uh, so let's go to Holland now and Wilma. Hi, Wilma. Hello. I have the tomatoes. Oh, I show, I show, grown on I, the cow garden. 
Tower Garden. And I uh, open uh, up again, Wilma. The, our little hearts when you Beautiful. and the taste is very, very good. Uh, I normally don't eat tomatoes, but this one I do. They are so tasty. That is delicious. They called heartbreakers. Heartbreakers. Yeah. So you can all order the seedlings everywhere, heartbreakers. And I have two two little plants in the tower garden down because the the, the leaves are are yeah are going too fast and the tomatoes are too too strong to uh, to to not to grow in the in the upper the tower. So I have them on the down. And we had uh, uh, what I also love. I I show it to you. You see here the this one, yeah, that is very very big plant. At, yeah, I, um, and I cut them off, but little leaves starting growing again, and they are so tasty in the salad. So everything on the, on the tower, I use in a salad, except uh, the the leaves from the tomatoes, but. Everything mixed in a salad that's alive, that it's, it's so, so tasty. And uh, we, when you, you buy some salad or some stuff in, in, in grocery, that it's not alive. And this, this is on life. Uh, I started it in uh, December with seedlings and I'm still eating from the first seedlings right now. Wow. You eat with two persons in this and sometimes with gas, with a salad or something. But I'm amazed about the growth, the taste. Uh, uh, I put everything. Our water here is very of good quality. So I put every time new water in it and the, 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 the food of the plants. I don't know how you call it in English. Nutrient. Sorry. Nutrient. The nutrients. And it's so easy. It's so easy. And um, and what I'm, uh, in my body, I feel it that it's, it's another way to getting healthier. And yeah. so we started five years ago with the Juice Plus, and and everything is still better, 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 better. So we are now much more aware about our food on our plate. So yes, I'm very, very happy with it. Great, great, great. Well, fantastic. Now, is Liz there? Liz? She's still with the dog, is she? She's picking no. up her child. She's oh, not in the she's child. Not, okay. Yeah, she's in the car. Oh, she's, she's, in, in, oh. she's listening. All right, not to worry. Okay, good. All right. Well, look, um, I think um, have we, any, anybody got, got any questions they'd like to ask? Any questions at all before we move on? Wilma? Uh, I heard somebody said you buy the plants in or you grow everything with seedlings? Yeah, th there's a company in the UK that they provide the seedlings already grown, okay. um, but they are looking to do something in Europe as well. I think that that's what the company are looking to do. Uh, and the, the place that I went to in Phoenix, this uh, facility, they actually do something in the region of 20,000 seedlings a month to the distributor and domestic base. Because you know what it's like, you get your tower and you're all ready, you put together, and then you've got to wait six weeks for your seedlings to kind of germinate. Whereas if you can get the seedlings delivered at the same time, they can grow straight away. They start to germinate and all the rest of it. And uh, okay. uh, I think it's a great combination. Yeah, it is, it's much, it's much more fun, it's much better. I, I, planted some seeds, um, but only two of them went in there. And uh, what, why I took a lot of it out, because the choy I, I made was like this size, and I had more choy than I could eat, and it was yeah. tons of it. Yeah. So um, I delivered it out to a few people and just changed the plants I wanted to sustain, the ones I'm going to use more. Yeah. But, like, but yeah, like, it's like, only that size, but it makes a huge difference when I'm starting like that. Put them in there, and they grow in no time. Yeah. 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 But I remember when I first started, I grew, I, I juice in the morning. So mm. we, we, we thought, oh, cucumbers, celery, that would be great. But, and, and peppers, beware of peppers as well, uh, Howard. They are the biggest leaves you can ever see. And, you know, uh, they, they, they just, they overtake the tower. Unless you've got them on the bottom, um, they, they just kind of take over. 
and uh, we, we we had this we had this kind of like Trifford. It was a Trifford. I had I had these kind of like celery and and uh, and uh, cucumber halfway up the tower, and it was like you should squeeze in the office like this, you know, kind of getting past the plant. So, but it's it's incredible. The one thing I meant to mention is that every couple that comes to see the tower, it's the husband that is intrigued by the tower. And he turns around to his wife and says, darling, we need, we need to buy one of these. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely staggered. It's not the women, it's the men that seems to be intrigued by the whole thing. I've got a question. Um, can we get their tower gardens to Sweden? Uh, I believe it's in Scandinavia, yeah. Um, yeah, it's coming. It's not quite yet there yet, I don't think. It's not one of the 10 countries? It, it may be, yeah. But, uh, I'll check on that for if, you soon. So, yeah, if you can, because I've got the distributor around me today. She, she wants to buy one, so I've got to find a way of getting it, so even if I have to buy it and send it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so let's move on now, and we're going to go to the US now and to see Doug. And I hope Doug is there. Hello, Doug. Doug! Good to see you. Oh my goodness, what is that? What have you done? What have you done? He's eating the roots. There we go. Ah. Uh, yeah, it, um, it's a little cucumber plant. Uh, and this is, I don't know, probably 10 days old from sprouting. Um, but yeah, I've, uh, I, I had the pleasure when the J. Martin uh, got interested in the tower garden, we were invited with, I don't know, 20, 30 other people to come check it out. And uh, I, I'm not sure. So I don't know, is this mostly a district? Are you, are we, do we mostly have partners on the yeah, call or are there customers as well? Partners, but we're partners, yeah. Okay, um, I, I just, you know, we've had it for almost 10 years here in the US. And I just wanna say, if you are involved in the Juice Plus business at any level, um, sharing the plant concentrates, the Tower Garden is the best sales tool you can have to uh, help people understand the value of growing their own food, primarily, you know, the Tower Garden itself. But if you notice that when you look at the Tower Garden, this is the, this is Tower Garden by Juice Plus, eh? And sooner or later, someone is going to say, oh, I love my Tower Garden, but what's that Juice Plus stuff? But what, what is Tower Garden by Juice Plus? So I just want to say that as a sales tool or as a you know, if you just grow it and show it, I guarantee that your business will have a whole new life yeah. uh, by introducing the tower garden. And I heard, I heard people talk about their children, can't say enough about, you know, young moms or young families that have children. The tower garden is a brilliant educational tool. If you haven't uh, gone there yet, or if you don't know, are not aware of him, uh, you can write down Stephen Ritz and the Green Bronx Machine. Um, and just go watch some of these unbelievably inspirational videos about what the power of putting a seed in the ground can do or a seed in your rock bowl and put it in your tower. Um, so all that to say that I, I, when I first heard about it, we took two home. Then I was like, well, if you're gonna grow strawberries, as you know, most strawberries grow in the ground in a huge patch and you need tons of land for strawberries, right? Um, the, 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 the pitch to have more than one tower is that you want to have a, a tower that's dedicated just to strawberries. Um, and not just in June, but ever bearing strawberries, because if you have little kids, uh, they will see those little red berries and you will have to fight them for those berries. And, you know, a plant maybe produces, you know, each plant doesn't produce a lot. So I encourage people if, if you are so inclined and if you have the space, uh, now, uh, I, I, you know, get, get multiple towers and just have one be a strawberry tower. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, your towers don't have to look perfect. As you can see, um, you know, uh, someone mentioned they were growing pak choy. Pak choy grows really fast, but it also goes to seed very fast. And okay, so I didn't get to this in time, but growing flowers on your tower is another amazing thing. 
Um, this is a whole, I, I just, these are wildflower seedlings and you, you know, you need, I, I mean, not for monocots or just greens or herbs, but you need flowers to attract bees if you're gonna grow tomatoes or cucumbers or squash. Someone had mentioned growing squash. I mean, I have a, the I don't, you don't need many squash plants, but there's my first little crook neck squash um, growing there. Um, I'll show you, th this, is a, this is a tower of different lettuces. Um, and I also just put in a pitch, here's, here's another little squash coming in here. Um, but you want to, you can, you, if you only have one tower, you want to do pyramid gardening. So put your big plants on the bottom, put your medium sized plants in the middle, and then put your smaller herbal plants up on top. Um, I find that one of the things that grow amazingly well in a tower are bush beans. So this is a whole crop of bush beans and you can kind of see that the blooms are just about to come in. Um, I've got some tomato plants here. I've got some pepper plants there. Uh, someone mentioned growing rocket. This stuff, mm, delicious. So peppery, <laughs> live demonstration. Mustard greens growing here. Um, and because I have 12 towers, I will just say, if you, if you just have room for one in your apartment or in your flat, um, that's awesome. Um, do it year round make the investment to get a light kit because come, I mean, having lived in the UK, come October, there's not enough light to grow anywhere um, and you need artificial light. So from let's say mid-October to mid-March, uh, a great investment at some point is to have the light kit it, um, and you can grow year round. And I will tell you, it's one thing to grow your garden in the summer, it's a whole other ball game to have a tower garden going in the dead of winter. And someone mentioned the lights, man, when that light comes on, you know, 12, 15 hours of light, you wake up, you don't have to turn a light on in the house because that tower garden is gonna light up your life and you will feel so much better with that blue light spectrum beaming down all over you. And I just wanna, I'll, I'll close out just real quick. If, if you decide to have more than one tower, uh, let, let's say you have the space, uh, schools, uh, from the business perspective, getting grants for schools to grow a tower, amazing. But someone told me once, Doug, why are you growing all those towers? You're a fool. You know, farmers can never go on vacation in the summer because they have to water their crops, right? Well, what you're looking at there is a gravity feed tank. And so I can fill that with 65 gallons. I mix all my nutrients into that tank. And then you see this white pipe that comes out. And then there's all these little feeder lines that come off the manifold. And while it's not quite hooked up yet, because I'm still setting up my garden, but you can have the gravity feed tank automatically monitor water levels. So in the middle of the summer, you can fill up your gravity feed tank and take off. And whether, even if you only have three tower gardens, um, or if you have a couple of them, if you have a central location, and you wanna minimize the amount of time you have to spend with your tower garden, because the tower gardens are an, an amazingly efficient way to grow food, you might consider some ancillary products. Um, I will say uh, one more thing, if you're gonna grow uh, weighted fruiting plants like vegetable, like tomatoes, peppers, aubergine, uh, cucumbers, anything that's gonna vine out and bear fruit, you wanna get a cage. And the cage does not come on the home unit, um, but it does come on the flexed unit. And I will set up those hoops and they'll stack up around the tower and allow vining things like tomatoes or peppers or anything that has a weighted fruit to support itself within that cage. Um, the other thing I'll just mention is someone said that, that the typical unit, the, the standard tower garden comes with five levels. If, it, if it's a flex unit, it comes with five. And what I mean by that is one, two, three, four, five. You get 20 grow ports with a standard flex unit for, I don't know what the, I don't know, I'll just use US dollars, but for a 12% more investment, you can buy the extension kit and increase your, uh, your, your our return on investment by 
40%. And what I mean by that, for a 12% more cost up front, you can get eight more grow ports with these six, level six and seven. Um, the pump will support seven levels tall. So you can go from 20 grow ports to 28 grow ports. Um, and that is probably that I always, when people say, oh, how are you going to, I want to know, how are they going to use the tower garden? The other thing that I will say, someone mentioned commercial, uh, you can just keep going up. Um, if you'll notice, these are all seven tall, but I don't know if you can tell that one's even taller. So this one has nine ports. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36 plants. It does require a, a larger pump, but it's if you do the cost wise, you know, the vertical grow, that's the brilliant thing. <laughs> if you have X amount of flat space, you're limited, but in the vertical environment, you can keep going up. And, and while you may need a ladder to harvest, I just share that just so that, you know, depending on how excited you get um, with the tower garden, uh, and as you may know, I, I got really excited. Uh, it is an amazing, thing to grow your own food share with other people and especially in today's day and age i'll just share you know company-wide in, in north america when covid hit last spring you know tower garden sales were they were good they do better uh, canada is a boon in canada they don't grow any of their food in the winter everything is imported from a foreign country but North America sold out one year's worth of inventory in a tower garden in six weeks when COVID hit. So I just share that because more and more people who are health conscious are aware that sourcing their own food, even if it's just a little bit, I mean, uh, if you just have a greens for your smoothie and a, green, and a tower for your salad, um, it goes a long way. And what I, I'll close with, you know, while there is an initial investment in the tower garden, within 12 months, depending on what you're doing, it pays for itself. And then for the rest of the life of the tower garden, which is probably gonna last as long as you will, uh, it's like growing money. <laughs> I mean, owning a tower garden and growing your own, even if it's just lettuce and greens, chard, kale, whatever, things that you're gonna cook with, it's like growing your own money. And at the end of the day, a tower garden doesn't like juice plus it doesn't cost you anything um and i'll leave it with that james and just thank you for allowing me to share um i, I will i'll just close with you know i i was a gardener and before the tower garden i don't know if you can see where i live but we live on the ocean and this i live on a very steep hillside uh i have a big tree canopy um our other house is over there and the other thing i'll just close with is you will find if you have space, if you're in, an, in a flat, maybe not so much, but the front of your house is, is a different growing environment than the back of your house. And that deck over there, that deck will be close to 30 plus degrees Celsius in the summer. Not very good for growing lettuce, but with this tree canopy above me, it provides a little bit of shade and it changes the grow environment dramatically. So. It, it's a fun experiment and I just can't say enough about the tower garden and thanks for allowing me to share my my little uh, community garden with uh, those of you who are just getting started. Well, Doug, amazing. I mean, absolutely fantastic and as ever, full of enthusiasm, but I mean, no wonder because you've <laughs> got such a great story to tell. So we've just got yeah. a few more minutes left on the call, a couple of minutes. Um, let's ask some questions to Doug because this is such an opportunity. Um, uh, would anyone like to ask a question, a question? Um, Doug, just run through those three options. Hi there, how are you? Um, you know, when you said you, once you get three, you're called a, what, a mini tower, a mini farmer or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I don't, and, and me, I might be speaking out of, out of line, but in the US, you know, you can, if you want to buy a tower, you have the option of the flex unit which is a 30 inch diameter base. And uh, it, it, it's, it has a lot more options. You know, you can grow fruiting things, you can get a dolly, you can move it inside, outside. Different than the home unit, which is a smaller base, but it's designed to go inside in the winter. It, it, even in, in the US, it's much easier to push through a doorway and go from outside to inside. Um, so 
you can buy just one unit, but in, in the US, and I'm sure as it expands into other markets, you have the family farm option, which is three towers. And basically it's set up at, at some point when it's available, you basically get three towers for the price, excuse me, yeah, you get three towers for the price of two. Oh. Um, and then if you went, if you, let's say uh, like, you know, I know a lot of, you know, people have the P patch, uh, some people want to know how much does it cost to run a tower garden? If you have children that have ever ran a fish tank, it's kind of less than, I mean, it's less than running a fish tank because you get a return on your investment. You can actually eat it. Um, and then one, one thing I will say, I, I'm a stand, uh, people talk about seedlings. I'm a, if, if you get excited about the tower garden, you can grow seedlings. You know, if, if you have the space, you can set up your own little seedling business and, and provide that because a, a seedling is about two to three dollars per plant if you grow it and offer it to people. And I'll, I'll just, this, this is me planting my own seeds. I, I think this is, um, this is uh, cilantro coming up. Um, let's see, I've got, here's my basil. It's getting going, um, some more bean plants. And uh, here, these are a little pepper plants. I'm a little bit slow getting started. But I'm, a, I'm an advocate for sprouting your own seeds. Uh, if you do buy someone else's seedlings, don't bring them inside. <laughs> you will wind up with some kind of infestation of bugs. And while bugs are part of our world, a lot of people don't like them in their house. But it's the one thing you cannot take outdoor plants indoors because outdoor is a whole different environment and you will wind up at some point, especially as the plants age, you'll wind up with most typically like white fly on your lettuce or aphids. So if you have plants that are outside, leave them outside, don't bring them into your home um, and kind of uh, vice versa. I mean, if you have an inside plant, you can take it out, but once it goes outside, you don't wanna bring it in. And if you do have plants that aren't doing well, planting a seed is like a no brainer. Um, th these, this lettuce right here, uh, I think that's about, I don't know, six days. I sprouted it six days ago. Yeah. And I will be, I will put it in the tower today. And in three weeks, I'll be picking that lettuce and eating it. So within four weeks of putting a seed in the rock, well, especially for lettuce, you can start picking leaves off. Uh, the other thing that I'll just quickly share with lettuce is that I'm, at some point, I'm going to take this lettuce tower to the food bank because I just can't eat it all. Um, but you can cut, if you just grab this head of lettuce and cut it off halfway, in two more weeks, it'll be a full head of lettuce. So wow. this is 28, 28 lettuce plants here. You basically have 28 times two worth of harvests, if, if you want to do the math there. And there's just like, there's an endless number of things you can do. Well, Doug, you know, we're just going to finish the call now because we've been on for about 45 minutes. Uh, and again, amazing having you on. And we can't tell you how grateful we are. Um, what, how would you describe the potential you see for the European market with Tower Garden just coming? Um, you know, I, someone mentioned, you know, oh, you know, it's interesting how the men get involved you know, because it's a, it's a gadget. You know, it's got a pump. Um, the tower garden, I mean, a seven-year-old can put a tower garden together and every, the other cool thing is a tower garden includes everything you need. All you need to have is like a seven-year-old education to put it together and add a little bit of water. Um, the, what it's done for our business is it's, it's kind of staggering and more than ever now. I mean, when the tower garden first came out, people were like, well, yeah, that's kind of cool. And people either got it or they didn't. Um, but it, it, it is, it is a gateway to growing your juice plus business. I mean, the towers themselves provide a much larger retail profit, uh, than, than say the, the plant concentrates. Um, and the other thing that I will say, maybe not for everybody, but the number of commercial farms that are interested in tower gardens grows by the minute. I mean, the worst thing for environmental damage is modern agriculture. Uh, and I don't, I mean, I say that with like love in my heart because without farmers, uh, none of us are gonna be living very long in the city. Um, but 
modern agriculture has been devastating for the environment. Um, all the fertilizers and chemicals and runoff, it's, it's just not good. So from a commercial aspect, the tower garden has tremendous potential. And, and if you do get involved, there can be significant profits, but whether it's just the single use consumer, like I said, grow it and show it. I, I, I think you can call yourself a futurist on your business card because I really think that, and, and I will say there are lots of other products similar to a tower garden in the market, but make no mistake, the tower garden is a food production machine. It is not just like some kind of cute little thing you put in the corner. Um, there are other products out there, but I don't think anything was designed as well as the tower garden. And when you look at the plant tonic that comes with the tower garden, um, you know, they've, they've compared it to the best dirt organic farming methods known to man. And that simple A and B formula of tonic that you add to the tower, it goes head to head with the best organic growing methods. And while anyone can be a tower gardener, not everyone can be an organic farmer. And so I, I think it has tremendous potential. And I'll just encourage, even if you don't, even if you think that you can't grow anything, if you have a juice plus business, um, I think you're really missing the boat if you don't get involved in the tower garden and use that as an ancillary product to uh, improve your uh, plant concentrate business. And now you can offer, you know, people say, oh, I'd rather eat my fruits and veg, right? Great. How, how would you like to grow your own in a tower garden? So it, it has, uh, the, the, the potential is, is limitless if you ask me. Fantastic. Well, Doug, look, we are so grateful. Uh, we are going to bring the call to an end now because it's being recorded and we want to let people know that it's sort of 45 minutes. But thank you so much, Doug. We really appreciate you coming on so much. Thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you, everyone who shared. Um, you know, uh, thank you for Howard and Katie and Sue um, and uh, Wilma. Thank you very much, Gordon. Thank you very much for doing the presentation at the beginning. Um, and uh, thank you everyone for, for, for joining us. Um, and you know, we are at the beginning of something massively exciting. I, I think it's like the launch of the iPhone, to be honest with you. It's something so significant. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, everyone. Well, look, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. Take Thanks, care. James. Very great much. To, nice great to see you, to see you everybody. Thank Feel you. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 B